So I'm Stefan, and I'm part of the group Orthodox that's with Angelica, uh, Roy, Corey, and Stevie. We we have decided to uh, go to a Greek Eastern Orthodox cathedral for our uh, for our group presentation. We decided to choose this uh, religion based on you know it just being different than all of our religions that we have here in our group, and it seemed very interesting when we were looking through the different religions through the website. And it seemed really informative, which would help out greatly with our project. As far as uh, going to the the service, it was you know very different than what we've all what we're all used to. Uh, I'll go ahead and start by answering some of the questions that we're going to do individually. And uh, the first one asks, "What were what was your initial reaction upon entering the worship space?" And I'll go ahead and start off that it was very uh, weird, I guess, for me. I mean, it was. Because as soon as you walk in, it was nice, it was immaculate, they had, you know, very traditional settings, you know, with gold and all these old paintings and stuff like that, which, it was beautiful on the inside. But when you walk in, there was pe people were standing up and they were really attentive to what's going on, and they had, uh, they were all singing. But what really threw me off is that it was a very traditional type of singing. There was no guitars or drums or anything like that. It was, uh, you know, group singing, and it was also in... I would assume a language different than not in ours because either everybody was mumbling or I couldn't understand at all what they were saying. <laughs> uh, number two, what actions or rituals stuck out to you? I guess just the very traditional setting of it is what really stuck out to me. It's just when you go watch movies and stuff like that and they kind of go back in time, it seemed like you were literally going back in time. It was n nothing about it was modern, it was very con consistent and traditional of you know how it's been in the past with the religion. Uh, how did the layout of the space reflect the values and beliefs of the religion? Of the religion? Well, like I said, you know, it was very traditional. Uh, there was nothing modern about it, and there was just you know just nothing too special about it. It just seemed very consistent throughout the years. And uh, let's see, what conceptions and misconceptions about the religion uh, were confirmed by your visit? Well. Honestly, I thought it was going to be a whole lot more different than what it really was. But, you know, it, but based on the research that we did, what Roy gave us information on, it was basically everything that it, that it talked about. And, uh, you know, it was a great experience. Hi, I'm Roy. I'm with uh, Team Orthodox. Uh, we just got done attending uh, the Greek... Eastern Orthodox Church in Lilburn. Uh, the questions here, uh, what were your initial reaction upon entering the worship space? Uh, my initial reaction was that it was different from what I'm used to seeing. Uh, they were very unified uh, in their worship. They, they did it all together. There was a lot of singing and chanting. They uh, 
He really didn't like talk that much. I think there was like two points in the two hour service that they actually talked. So it was mostly just uh, worship uh, that was unified. Uh, what actions or rituals stuck out to you? Uh, their rituals stuck out the most. Uh, they seemed very traditional and that, that they just did it all together. So they were kind of one doing it. Uh, how did the layout of the space reflect the values and beliefs of the religion? Uh, the layout, the thing that, that stuck out to me the most was the ceiling. Uh, I think he said there was three and a half million tiles. Uh, you probably see it on our video. Uh, the hand itself was like six and a half feet. So it was uh, pretty amazing. Uh, how do you think the worship service is meaningful to the practitioner's life? Uh, it just seemed like they take their religion very serious, uh, their worship very serious. Um, you can tell uh, that they take it very serious. Uh, what conceptions or misconceptions about the religion were confirmed in your visit? Uh, it was what I expected after doing a little bit of research. It seemed to, my seemed, conception seemed to be confirmed after uh, going to the service. So that's it. Okay, here are the questions. What were your initial reactions upon entering the worship space? Um, my initial reaction was that it was very quiet, very, um, very calming place. Um, everyone was very welcoming. It was just a really nice place to be, very relaxing. Um, what actions or rituals stuck out to you the most? Um, I think the thing that stuck out the most was that the main guy, he, um, he didn't, when he was talking or preaching, he didn't really face the people. He, he had his back to the people, except on a few occasions he did like face the people when he was talking. I found that very interesting. And also there's a lot of singing involved. Um, how did the layout of the space reflect the values and beliefs of the religion? Um, like walking in everywhere, like all the walls are like covered with images of like saints and stuff. So that was like really neat and that kind of like makes you think about how important they are to them. Um, four. How do you think the worship service is meaningful to the practitioner's life? Um, like for today's service, they talked a lot about peace, like finding peace with yourself, with your neighbors, God, and the world. So I think like religion plays a big role in their daily lives and they take the service very seriously and to the art. So I thought that was really neat. Um, what conceptions or misconceptions about the religion were confirmed in your visit? I had read that um, it was very similar to the Catholic Church, and since I'm Catholic, going into the um, Greek Orthodox Church, I did notice like they are very similar. Even their prayers, the things they do, like rituals and everything, they're very alike, very similar. And that's it. <laughs> Hi, my name's Corey with Team Orthodox. Um, our church service that we went to was for the Atlanta Greek Orthodox Church um, in Atlanta. Uh, when we first walked in, it was kind of dark in the vestry, but they had somebody standing there with candles, and I was kind of it's kind of odd, just, you know, seeing that. It was different than what I was used to. I'm used to somebody kind of greeting you, handing you a you know a pamphlet of the program that they're going to be doing for the day, and then there wasn't really much said. So after that, we kind of walked in and sat down and um, as far as the some of the rituals that they were doing when we walked in um, all the liturgy they were chanting it and singing it um, 
and it was it was kind of kind of different from what I was used to seeing. Um, also, one thing that was kind of odd is it wasn't an exact time. I don't think that the church service exactly started because we were there from like 9.30 to about 10.30 and every once in a while I see a, a group of people walk in and just kind of trickle in and everything. So it's kind of, that was kind of a little bit different. But once everybody was in there, they had some kind of, I don't know, metal thing that had bells on it. They were kind of just kind of shaking it a little bit, had incense in it. And, you know, by the time he did it a few times all around, you can kind of smell the incense throughout the whole church. Um, as far as the layout goes, uh, when we walked in, um, how it might reflect on their religious beliefs, um, they had a lot of mosaics, little bitty um, tiles of everything that you know, had different you know, depictions of the apostle, um, nativity scene, Jesus, you know, Mary. Um, I mean, it was very, very beautiful, very pretty. Um, the altar had a lot of you know, brass or gold looking kind of stuff. So it's very icon kind of stuff, and I guess it's not that they want to hold it up, something that they see is, is very beautiful and everything. Um, as far as misconceptions or conceptions, I know that East-West, you know, schism years back that kind of separated everything, but I was kind of thinking we're going to walk in doing something odd or different, and um, that wasn't really the case. They were very warm and very welcoming when we talked to them and everything, so it was up in arms, so. Okay, so we weren't able to uh, get a video recording or video log of us interviewing the pastoral assistant, Jonathan Resmini, but we were able to ask him some, you know, brief interview questions, and he was very informative on the answers that he provided back to us. So I'm going to go ahead and reflect on some of the answers that he, was, that he gave to us. One of the first questions that we asked him was, uh, what is unique about your form of worship and in what aspect is most meaningful to you? And he really, uh, described, he really described his answer really well because one of the things that he was really proud of about his religion was how consistent it was over the years. Uh, he said, stating back all the way from the beginning of when the religion started, that the way it's practiced and the way the service is done is very consistent. It's the same throughout the years on what they do, which I do believe because it was a very traditional service. And... He said that uh, it's very it's it's similar to other religions like Catholicism, but it's it's also different as well. They kind of go back to the early teachings, the old text of the Bible, saying that there's uh, there's actually 49 books in the original Bible, where in, you know in the Catholic religion there's 46, and it was kind of similar to the Catholic religion, but one of the major differences that he stated was that uh, there was a split off between the uh, the two religions. He said that back in 10, the year 1054, the empire split into two sides. There was the west side, which was more Latin-based, and there was the east side, which is more Greek-based. And uh, there was more of a language barrier between the Latin side and the Greek side. And of course, over time, you know, over 700 years, he said that there will be some things lost in translation. And with those things lost in translation, that's why there's slight differences between the Eastern Orthodox Church and then, the, you know, the more predominant Catholic Church and stuff like that. Um, what the main form that they used to really practice or teach their uh, religion, he said, was was through the the scripture, which is, you know, the original Bible, and that's what I was talking about earlier with the uh, 49 books that they had. And, uh, you know, he was very generous, and he gave us a, a slight little tour of the area, and he did, uh, you know, inform us on how the religion has been practiced. And one of the things that really stuck out to us when we asked him, uh, what the major difference is between his religion and the other ones that are of Eastern Orthodox. He said there wasn't really any except for the language. He said if you went to a Roman East Orthodox Church or if you went to a Russian or German, it would be exactly the same as the Greek Eastern Orthodox Church. The only difference is, is the language that is spoken in. And, you know, as today's recording and everything, uh, it was partially done in Greek, Greek language, I believe. It was something, I don't know, it was something we couldn't understand. But as it came over to America, it's starting to become more uh, westernized as we speak English in the services.
Hier wird zumindest gar nicht mehr. Thank you. 